Well guys, after 74,000 miles, my TCT or timing chain tensioner actually went out. Well, it's starting to go out. I've been hearing some rattling. It's really subtle, but I want to get it done and over with before it gets worse. And this is probably one of the things that you should do right away when you get your S2000. So yeah, some signs that show up when your timing chain tensioner is going out is you'll hear some rattling. And that rattling will usually come from this area. And it progressively gets louder and louder and that's just from the chain slapping around and without the pressure from that tensioner on the chain, it actually starts to rattle even more. But in my, in my case, I am about 70% sure that it's that because as I rev the engine and it doesn't really amplify the sound, it stays uh, only during the low RPMs, that's when you can really hear it. But that's what I'm going to be doing today and I'm upgrading to the Blade Motorsports heavy duty timing chain tensioner and that's what you guys should really use to replace uh, your timing chain tensioner. So yeah. Unless you're using the o OEM timing chain tensioner to replace yours, uh, it's a lot easier to use the, um, the Blade Motorsports timing tensioner. It's right here. Uh, if you're using the OEM, it's a really good idea to take out this access port right here so that once you put in the new one, you can pull the pin. And on the Blade Motorsports one, you don't have to pull a pin to eject the, the guide right here, the pin that puts pressure on the uh, chain. Instead, you just unscrew this right here, the swivel, and that releases the pressure. So the Blade Motorsports one should be really easy. But from videos that I've seen, it's usually about a 10 minute job. But since it's my first time, I'm expecting a little bit longer. And if you can see right here, you're going to be removing the two outer ones. So this one, and then there's one up here. I think you can barely see it. That's up here that you're going to want to loosen up and then remove. So that will, those bolts alone will allow you to pull the old one out. And because uh, it has gaskets and it's been on there for... 74,000 miles it might be hard to take off you might have to actually take this port out anyways to maybe put a flat head to help um, pry that off but I'm about to see and I already loosened them up so I'm gonna remove the bolts and then try to pull it off all right so this is what your new one will look like from Belayed Motorsports so notice here how it has this swivel. You don't want to remove any of that yet because that's what will release the pressure for the pin to come out. And uh, here are your new gaskets on the new tensioner. So you're going to want to rub some oil on all of that just so it slides in better and has some lubricant for those gaskets. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some oil and then just lather it on. All right, so you guys are going to make want to make sure that you put down some paper towel or any other sort of thing that can soak up the oil once you remove the tensioner. So mine was actually pretty easy to remove. I just applied a little bit of pressure and you want to be really careful when you're taking it out so the pin doesn't fall out. So you can see that it actually can pull out pretty easily and mine seems really loose so I mean that's another sign that it was pretty bad actually. So yep so now that that one's out I can go ahead and start getting the other one ready. All right, so once you got that lubed up and you lathered it on the O-rings, uh, you're going to want to put it in, and it only goes in one way, so um, it will it should just slide right in because you put that oil on and um, because it only goes in one way, so you'll know it'll slide right in. But in case it doesn't slide right in and you feel some resistance, and that resistance is going to be pretty tough resistance. Like You're, you're going to really have to push into it if you're feeling that resistance. Then you're going to want to go ahead and crank over the engine about 90 degrees so that it looses up the tension in the timing chain to be able to push this one in. Luckily mine went in right away so I didn't have to do that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put in those two other bolts back in. Okay so you're going to want to tighten those bolts on that are down here once you got the new ones on the new tensioner uh, to 8.7 pounds of torque and you should be good for that and then once I'm done doing that I will start removing the swivel in the middle 
once I have those uh, those two bolts torqued down then I can remove the swivel and then the pin should be released into the chain and then we still have one more thing to do all right so here's the bolt that I took out of the TCT and this was in the middle what we're gonna replace this with is this other one that goes into that uh, TCT in the middle and it has some holes for the oil we'll go ahead and put this one in All right, so that middle bolt that we put in instead of the wing nut that we took out, uh, that's gonna be torqued down to four pound feet. And then once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and grab the cover. And when I'm talking about the cover, it's gonna be this one with the gasket. So I'm going to put in some oil, then put in the gasket, and then some more oil. Okay, so I lathered some oil on the gasket, and now we have the cover just left, and that's what we're going to tighten down. And with those two other bolts that they supplied for this cover, we're going to go ahead and tighten this one to um, 8.7 pounds, just like the two outer ones. So, Alright, so as I'm doing this, I don't know what the hell, but I don't think that Belayed Motorsports included the bolts for the cover in my package. Because there's nowhere that I can find them and I know I put them all all the hardware in the same spot So I'm gonna contact them just to be um, for sure but So what I'm doing instead is I took the bolts off the cover of the old one and I'm gonna be replacing them I try to use the two outer bolts for the middle cover, but I'm gonna compare sizes right now because as I got uh, in farther into the threads with the original bolts on that were for the outside two of the TCT it got even more tough it was a lot tougher to screw in so I'm going to show you guys and see if there's a length difference between the two outer ones and the two middle ones so here are the ones for the cover that I took off right here you can see that this is the cover for the old one I took them off and here they are so Yep, you can see that there is a size difference, so if yours doesn't include those bolts for the cover, then you're going to want to remove the bolts from the cover on the old one and use those. So I'm going to go ahead and put these two in for the middle cover, and you're going to want to make sure that the blade, the B, is upwards, upright, just like this. It's going to go on like to the side so you can read the B. They're in now, so I'm going to go ahead and torque those down to 8.7 pounds of feet, and we should be done, and then I'll start up the car and see if there's a difference in the sound. And if it's still the same as earlier, then I'm going to have to get a valve adjustment and then see if that works. got the part in, and it's all torqued down to spec. Um, I can't really tell the sound difference right now. Well, the engine's still cold, but from what I can tell right now, it doesn't sound too bad. There's not really much of a rattle. But I'll do an update video as time goes on and I drive the car even more. But for right now, it seems pretty good. And the next thing that I'm going to have to do if the sound does come back is check and see that everything's still good with the TCT. And if it is, then I'm going to have to go ahead and do the valve adjustment. Alright, well, thanks for watching the install in the S2000 and I'll catch you on the flip side.